there has been some foul play, some chicken dancing. Now, I got nothing against chicken dancing. I'm pretty good at it. I'm known to break it off with the chicken dance. But I don't want chicken dance during Mass. I don't want chicken dance during Holy Communion. So let's see what's going on in Germany right now. Here it is. During Mass. Insanity. This is insane. Oh, she's blessing kids. Grandma Rita. She's blessing kids. This is Germany. And we got the clown. Just straight buffoonery. The clown. Again, I personally like chicken dance. Joy and I, we got married over 20 years ago. We had a rehearsal dinner at a place called Edelweiss in Fort Worth, Texas. Wonderful place. I'd recommend it, but I think it's now shut down. And I know that night before I got married, I was, I was getting down with that chicken dance. I mean, I got those chicken skills. But in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, reminder, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is Calvary. It is the eternal Logos, God the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Nailed to the wood of the cross, bleeding out every drop he has for all of our mortal and venial sins. And we are supposed to come there in a spirit of humility and broken heartedness next to the Virgin Mary, standing at the foot of the cross, and to adore our Lord and make reparations. That is what the holy sacrifice of the Mass is about. Not about this. No. H to the no, Germany. Nine. H to the nine. She makes, who's this lady making signs of the cross on kids? Here, hold up. Here it is. Here she is. Oh, I'm going to put the sign of the cross on you, little kid. Is she a priest? You know, is she a bishop? How come she's blessing people? A, why has she been handling Holy Communion? All right, I don't know what's worse. The chicken song or a communion in the hand and lay Eucharistic ministers here. I mean, priests have their hands anointed by a bishop so that they can have sacred hands to administer the second person of the Trinity to repentant sinners. That is Christianity. That is Catholicism. Not Aunt Rita handing out communion like it's finger food, like it's tacos. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills right now. Like Mugatu. Am I taking crazy pills? Am I insane here? I've told y'all the story of how Grover made me Catholic. I mean, made me trad. I remember I was at the University of Dallas. That's where I got my PhD in philosophy. And I was at a daily mass and I went, I always went to the priest. I didn't want to receive communion from lay people. I always went to the priest, but for some reason, the way I was sitting, whatever that day, I could not get to the priest. I was stuck with the lay person. It was a young man. And he was wearing a purple Grover shirt. Maybe I can find this. It was a gigantic Grover t-shirt, and I came forward. Here it is. Mamma mia. I came forward to receive my Lord and Savior, my God. And I don't know what it's like nowadays, but at the University of Dallas, there were no um, like statues. There wasn't even very good crucifix. I come forward to receive Jesus Christ, true God, true man. And this young man holds up the host to me, and says, the body of Christ. And I look up, I genuflect, I receive on the tongue, but I look up and I see this. I see this, my friends. It is Grover's face, bigger than my face, 
imposed with the sacred Eucharist. And I thought to myself, this is absolutely ridiculous. There's not an icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary or John the Baptist. There's no iconostasis there. There's no side altars. There's no incense. Everything I thought when I, become, when I became Catholic, none of that is there. There is no statues, nothing. It's a bare altar versus the people. And I'm staring into the eyes of a Sesame Street character as I hear the words, the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. I remember it was that day in which I said, I'm never doing this again. The Novus Ordo, or as you might call it, the Grover, Grover Ordo, is so off the chain, so wild that you got this. And you got Grover, and you got Cal, and I said, you know, I just cannot do this anymore, dear Jesus Christ. I cannot do this anymore. I don't want to stare into the face of Grover while I receive the most holy Eucharist. Can I get an amen? If you agree with me, just go ahead and like today's show. And that is when I started attending the traditional Latin Mass with my family. It was Pentecost I'd been before, but it was Pentecost 2010, almost 14 years ago, that we took the children, Joy and I, and we went to the Fraternity of St. Peter, which was meeting in a cafeteria, not even a church. And we went to Mass. It was a low Mass. No, no, no. It was, it was a high Mass. We went to a high Mass. I remember because the kids were fascinated by the incense. And even though we were in a cafeteria, the liturgy was ordered, it was dignified, and the reception of Holy Communion was, was in line with the majestic dignity of Almighty God. And what bothers me is this is allowed. It is not just tolerated, it is celebrated. And... This, the traditional Latin Mass, this is Institute of Christ the King, by the way. This is glorious. This is beautiful. The flowers, the altar, just how much time and effort went in to honoring God here. And just look how dignified the consecration of the precious blood of Jesus that redeems us. This, what you see on the screen, is forbidden, as they say. This is bad, right? This makes people rigid. It gets them away from Vatican II. It makes them schismatic. Um, it makes them heretical. Uh, it makes them Jansenistic. This is what we're told. That offering a clean oblation in the beauty of holiness is bad, is wrong, is persecuted. The bishops will not give beautiful churches right? Sometimes it has to be in a cafeteria, but this right here, this is what I want. And yet people say Taylor Marshall is a schismatic and, you know, schismatic, by the way, is a sin against charity. It's a schism, schism according to Thomas Aquinas, is an act of hate because it's contrary to charity. Taylor Marshall is a hater. Traditional Catholics are haters because they want to worship God like this instead of like this with a clown in a pink hat doing the chicken dance while people come up and receive communion in the hand and Aunt Rita blesses children with her unconsecrated hands. And I just say nine, age to the nine, age to the no. This is what we are going to do. And it is safeguarded by Pope St. Pius V, who wrote Quo Primum and said that this mass can never be abolished. Did you know that? Did you know that was papal teaching? That the codified, canonized, Tridentine mass cannot be abolished? 
Yeah, but Taylor, Paul the VI, I don't care, honestly, what Paul the VI tried to do. You know, people said Paul the VI abrogated the traditional Latin Mass. You can live in the 1970s, 1980, the Monsignor would say, yeah, but uh, Paul the VI abrogated the traditional Latin Mass. Well, guess what? Pope Ben XVI said Paul VI never abrogated the traditional Latin Mass. You can't abrogate the traditional Latin Mass because Pope St. Pius V, in quo primum, said that this Mass cannot be abrogated. Someone says, woman in the front row is wearing a witch's hat. Let's go back and see here. That right there, that looks witchy to me. Witchy woman. Oh, you're right. Girl is wearing a witch hat. I mean, I'm all about head coverings for women in mass, but not the witch hat. H to the no. This show is just titled, subtitled H to the no. And if you're with us, if you're not yet a subscriber, you need to subscribe. Dr. Taylor Marshall Podcast, hit the bell. Every time we go live, you wouldn't want to miss out on this. So I'm going to go to comments now. Was I wrong that day 14 years ago-ish that I went to the Novus Ordo Mass at the University of Dallas and I looked into the beady eyes of Grover and I said, you know what? Enough is enough. You know, what, what is your El Guapo? For me, my El Guapo was Grover t-shirt. For other people, their El Guapo is the chicken dance. What would it, it, has it already happened where you're like, I'm done with this? Or what would it take? A woman deacon? Would that be your El Guapo? What would it take? Let's go to your comments. Let's see what y'all are saying. We're going to kick it off with Renee X because... Rene X always brings the good comments. The beautiful and richly constructed high altars were breathtaking and benefited the sacred presence of our divine Savior's presence. Amen. Rene, my sister, can we all agree that this is good? It's good. I love it. All day long. Heaven to the yes. Love it. Thank you, Rene. Good to see you today. Thanks for joining us live like to see all the regulars, like to see the super chat people. Y'all are awesome. Antoinette says, there is a dress code for the church. However, many people do not pay attention to it. Yes, there is a dress code. People say, well, you, well people are poor and they can't. Look, you wear your best. All right. If the only pair of clothes that you have are blue denim jeans and a Grover t-shirt, we're going to accept that. All right. But I'm assuming that the guy who owns a pair of jeans and a Grover t-shirt also owns maybe a polo or a dress shirt or a pair of khakis, maybe has a blazer or a sports coat he can throw on. You know, let's try. Bring your best. If you're going to meet the king or the queen or a president or go to a funeral, you at least put something on. Same with the ladies. You know? The beauty of holiness. Let's try. Let's be handsome. Let's be beautiful. Let's be modest. Let's honor God with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. Everything we can. With the music, with the architecture, with the flowers, with the candles, with the candlesticks, with what we wear, with how we sing, with how we hold our body, how we hold our head, how we hold our eyes. All of this is Catholic devotion. We're not Gnostics. We, we don't believe that worship is just with our brains. We believe our worship is with our bodies. That's Catholic. Damlin says, I'm wondering why TLM show showed up in my feed. YouTube algorithm broken, sending a, Satan, a Satanist here. Oh no, Damlin. If you're a Satanist, the Holy Ghost said you're going to be here today on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. So welcome everybody right now. We got a thousand people watching on Facebook, Twitter. Let's pray a Hail Mary for Damlin, who's a Satanist, that Damlin will become 
Catholic. Oremus nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et ator mortis nostre. Amen. Mighty God, we ask for the conversion of Damlin. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We got you, Damlin. A thousand people just pray to Hail Mary for you. We love you. Come home to the church. Come home to Jesus. Super chat here, generous from Susie. She says, I don't understand why people are against the TLM. At first I was that way, Susie. Why are people against this? It's awesome. As you study the issue, you begin to realize that people are against the traditional Latin mass. This is going to sound harsh. People are against the traditional Latin mass because they are against Jesus Christ. They are against God the Father. They are against the Holy Ghost. They want to make a mockery of the Trinity. So they do this. I don't think... Oh, we got the altar girls in the background. I didn't notice them. We got the witch in the black hat. We got Aunt Rita blessing kids. We got Aunt Rita giving communion in the hand. I don't even... Is there a priest in here? Kyrie lace on 100X. Doctor, I know you always say, don't leave the church. My anger, however, is so great that I cannot see any alternative than rebellion. No, 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 Corey. We're not rebelling. We're not leaving. You know, it's like a bunch of bad guys come into your house. Right? You're not going to burn your house down to spite them and you're not going to leave leave and go live somewhere else and continue to pay the mortgage on that house where the bad guys are living no you're going to stay you're going to stand your ground the church is your home through baptism you're staying the other people can leave if you don't like it you can leave you see we got to be proactive we can't be effeminate we can't back down we got to stand our ground and protect our home. Protect this house. JL says, shorts, flip-flops, and a woman wearing sequin spaghetti strap top was my El Guapo at Novus Ordo. Yeah. I understand homeless people, zero judgment. But you see people roll up in a Mercedes, BMW, Lexus and they pop out and they got yoga pants on Dallas Cowboy jersey on concert, Marilyn Manson concert t-shirt on torn jeans on and it's like this is the house of God this is the gateway to heaven you are in the presence of the Holy Trinity you're going to spend all that money on a Mercedes and you're going to roll up in your pajamas or something. Gee, Taylor, it sounds really judgmental and stuff. I mean, deal with it. We all know it's the truth. Dr. Marshall, can you provide some historical context to the religious troubles in Germany? It seems that Germans have a particular difficulty with heresy over the centuries. Yes, it all goes back to the Aryan heresy, which was amongst the Gothic people. Both the Visigoths and the Ostrogoths, they split. One went east toward, one went, was east in, in the Germanic regions, another went west into Spain. They struggled with Arianism into the 500s. And this is one reason why the what is the reason why the Filioque was added to the Niceno-Constantinople Creed that was originally issued in its original format, 325, but then in 381, its final format. It's because of the Germanic people were infested, infiltrated, but especially infested with heresy up until the 500s. And then you have the Protestant Reformation taking root and growing out of 
Germany as well with Martin Luther. And I know this is going to offend some people, some Germans out there. But if you just take a snapshot of all the French saints, there's a lot of them. All the Italian saints, there's a ton of Italian saints. All the Spanish saints, all the English saints, all the Irish saints, tons of Irish saints, Scottish saints, right? You, you put all these up. But then you go to German saints. There are German saints. Don't get me wrong. But it's a shorter list. There are great German saints that have a German background. I believe Albert the Great is one, St. Hildegard. I mean, there's fantastic saints. I'm not saying if you're German, you're screwed when it comes to holiness. But there's, there is something generational there. And in my book, Infiltration, I look at how very much a lot of the early problems in Catholicism in the early 1900s, before Vatican II, we're talking 1910s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s especially. Germany is a hotbed for heresy. Just is. America has her propensity to heresy too. So don't hear me dogging on just the Germans. We've got our own problems in America. But I'm just saying that there is a historical background to this. So, Nicholas, thanks for the super chat and good question. Sebastian, we don't all have access to the traditional Latin Mass. I cannot stand much more of these hippie priests and hymns being sung with the guitar. I agree with you, Sebastian. Not everybody has access to the traditional Latin Mass. People say, what do I do? I, I usually begin the conversation. I say, do you have traditional Latin Mass within a 60-minute commute of your home? And they're like, I don't know. Okay, well, you got to now go on the Internet and you got to search and f see if you do. If you do then your problem just got solved. Yeah, but driving 40 minutes, that's so long. I know, but the alternative is Grover or chicken dance. So drive the 40 minutes. I've met people that drive three hours. They're out there. Or if you work from home or you can transfer your job, move. This is why I'm always recommending you guys go to realestateforlife.org. You wouldn't believe the amount of people who watch this podcast and they listen to what we talk about. And like, you know, I need this. I need traditional Latin mass. I need Catholic schools. I need a red state. I need conservative politics. I need to get out of California. Where do I go? I always say Texas, Florida, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. These are the places that I think are solid. Obviously, I live in Texas. So go to realestateforlife.org. They'll help you sell your house wherever you are. They'll help you buy a new house wherever you want to go. Go to realestateforlife.org. They're the people that I trust. And make sure you heard about it from me, Taylor Marshall, on the Dr. Taylor Marshall Show, the Dr. Taylor Marshall Podcast. They will hook you up and they will help you. I trust these people. Dozens and dozens and dozens of people use realestateforlife.org and they hear about it here. So moving is an option too. If you can't move, you don't have access to Latin Mass, you can look for Byzantine, Eastern Catholic liturgies. You can make the best of your situation. If it's really, really bad, I'll say something controversial here. I'll probably get some flack for it. But, you know, if my only option was to attend a liturgy that was this, I would follow my conscience and not take my children to that. Yeah, but Taylor, it's so valid. Even if it is valid. By the way, I kind of hope that's not valid. Is that bad to say? Is it bad for me to say I hope that that's not, that, that this is not valid? You got the altar girl. I mean, you cannot expose your children to Eucharistic abuse, liturgical abuse, and heresy. And so if I lived in a place and that was the only mass that I would go, that I could go to, I would stay home. Yeah, but Taylor, canon law says that you, mu you fulfill your Sunday obligation, mass requirement, by attending mass in the Catholic rite. To, straight up, I'm 100% convinced that that ain't a Catholic rite. 
follow your conscience, get a good spiritual director, a good Catholic priest, talk to them, put a game plan together. But I know for some people, moving sounds like a big deal, but if you think about it, it could be the most important decision you ever make because your children are now going to meet certain other children as they grow up in Catholic communities and marry them. And now you're going to have Catholic grandchildren and great, great grandchildren. You're going to have friends who encourage you. You're going to have good priests, good confessions. Your teenagers are going to have good confessions. I mean, this is a spiritual investment. So moving, I think is definitely in the cards here. That's why I say realestateforlife.org. They'll hook you up. Back to your comments. Raymundo says, you should all look into Blessed Raymond Lull. Everybody look into Blessed Raymond Lull. 90% of communication is through our body language. What are we communicating to God when we have no reverence and modesty when worshiping him? I agree. I agree. Daniel K, moderator, he says, I lived in Frankfurt, 84 to 85, wild place. No doubt, Daniel. You've actually told me some of those stories. I just noticed communion being given at the same time. Oh, so bad. Yes, that's the scandal here. Did I not say it? Doing that chicken dance. And giving communion in the hand. And there's no pre. I don't. Maybe the priest is obscured behind the witch's hat. This is so whack. No bueno. No bueno. Camera. Camera. Jerry Bates says five hours for me. That's long. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. That's tough. Oh, John Wick. I love John Wick. How cool is it that John Wick watches this podcast? I bet he's the real John Wick, too. All these offensive acts in churches, when is re-consecrating a church required versus reparations? 100% agree. I talked about it yesterday with, um, I lost the, I think I might have the picture of it, in, in New York City at the cathedral. Yeah, here we go. They had the Cecilia, they call her St. Cecilia, Right? And they called her the, the, the great whore, the queen of whores. And they were celebrating her, and the priest was there, and Cardinal Dolan said the priest was a hero, and I don't understand how you can be a hero and basically lay down and do nothing. The analogy I gave was Batman and Joker, right? Joker's like terrorizing the city, and Joker shows up, and he's like, we must not, re we must, we must not resist Joker. Leave him be. He must receive a pastoral accompaniment. Stand down. Batman out. And then Batman leaves? Like, how is that heroic? No, the priest needs to get out the cord of whips whoosh, and drive out, right? All this irreverent yelling and screaming and clapping and nonsense and profanity and immoral, immodest sexual discussions, all that stuff that was going down. I don't have the clip queued. Maybe I do have the clip queued. I'll run it again, man. No. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, here we go. Here it is. This may not work. But look at, watch this. Oh, we got those people. No, ain't going to work. My bad. Oh, wait, here we go. But is there volume? Here we go. Tutta Cecilia, la gran puta. That no one. That no one. De todas las putas. Here we go. Here we go. Por amor, igualdad y. This whore. This great whore. This great whore. Saint Cecilia. Saint Cecilia. Mother of all whores. Mother of all whores. Wearing a cowboy hat. Disgrace in the whole state of Texas, by the way. You shouldn't wear a hat in church. There's the priest right there. 
doing jack diddly nothing. Look at this. Complete irreverence at St. Patrick's. Did the whole show yesterday. This is bad. And, and all the while, right, it wouldn't be so bad. It would, there wouldn't be so much salt in the wound. It wouldn't sting so bad if they didn't also say you can't have this. Traditional Latin mass is bad. And that's just, I think it proves 10 out of 10 times that we have infiltration. If they're going to tell you that having Cecilia the great whore is allowed and is tolerated and chicken dance is tolerated and Grover is tolerated, but traditional Latin mass is not tolerated, that tells me that the people at the top calling these shots are bad. They have infiltrated into positions of power and are deceiving people and leading them astray, not towards our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but towards Judas Iscariot being gnawed and chewed in the mouth of Lucifer himself. Mm -mm. Not going to do it. Sorry, Grover. Don't want that anymore. If any of you watching this, any of you ever perform chicken dance at mass, I want you to unsubscribe from this channel and never come back again. You are banished. No chicken dance liturgy here on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. Susie's back with another super chat. What do you think? going to happen to our church. Do you think a new Pope will reverse what's happening? Yes. I think a future hope will abolish all this nonsense under Bergoglio. That's what I believe. Let's go back into these questions. Delane says, Father Ripperger came to give a talk at St. Patrick's Cathedral not too long ago. Maybe the funeral mass was Satan's revenge. Agreed. That's what we talked about yesterday in the podcast. Definitely agree with that. I think Satan is keeping score. Bellator says, let's help Marshall's channel. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. Thank you, Bellator. I appreciate you. Fist bump. Happy Lent. We, uh, we're over 800,000 subscribers now. Amazing. On the way to a million. We'll have to do something really cool, really celebratory when this channel, our channel, hits one million subscribers. Here's another super chat from Advanced Discernment, a supernatural intervention declaring tribulation formed seven weeks before the Ukraine-Russian war showing God unleash Google Advanced Discernment to see. Okay. Thank you for that message. Um, LaFay says, Taylor, please read my super chat. Just type it again. It's Unfortunately, there's thousands and thousands, and they go really fast. Daniel, if you can find a super chat and uh, send it to me, I'll, uh, I'll read it and look for it. Apologize for missing that. Oh, here it is. All right, LaFay, you helped me in my conversion back in 2012. But after the summer of shame in, tw in 2016, when you decided to touch these topics, I didn't know what to think. Now I understand. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. La Fe de Iglesia, thank you so much. And you know what? We have to talk about these things because people do experience, that's the wrong thing. People do experience the, these chicken dance moments. And a lot of them think, this is crazy. I'm going to leave the church. I'm going to go home. But when you come here on this podcast, you know that right now there's 1,146 people on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube watching. And it'll be on Rumble later. You realize Wait a second, I'm not alone here. There are thousands of us. There's 800,000 people who subscribe to this channel, right? This is not like a crazy cult of people who are like, I don't want to go to Grover Mass or Chicken Dance Mass or Cecilia Mass or whatever. It's a big group of people. This is for real. I'm not taking crazy pills. So, whereas some people might say, well, if you talk about these things, if you talk about these things, Tyler, people are going to leave the church and uh, that's bad. And my response to that is, 
if we don't get the flashlights out and shine it on the cockroaches and put together a plan, the whole house is going to be eaten up with termites and cockroaches. The more we can expose this nonsense and put these people on check, like Cardinal Dolan needs to know he needs to be put on check. He can't, he can't, that's on him. That they made a mockery of the cathedral and of the mass and of the funeral rites in his cathedral under his oversight, that's on him. He needs to take responsibility. He needs to get the flashlight out and shine a light on the darkness. That makes the church better. That keeps people in the church. Ignoring the problem and letting the infestation of the Grover masses and the chicken dance masses and the weird guitar masses and the, all this stuff has caused a hemorrhage for the past 40 to 60 years. And we're just saying no more. How about we start by doing that? Traditional Latin mass. How about we start here or go back to here when things were good? Is that crazy or is that prudent? I think it's prudent. Let's do it. You agree? If you agree, like the video, because so far only 676 of you have liked the video. It's like half. Tell, wake up the YouTube algorithm and hit the like button. Leave a comment. I do engage in the comments, so if you want to talk to me, leave a comment. Andrea, she's in here. She says, we must not be lukewarm. I agree. In the book of the Apocalypse, Revelation, Christ says, you were neither cold nor hot. You were lukewarm. You were tepid. And so I vomited, ah, I vomited you out of my mouth. Yeah, but Taylor, Jesus is really nice. Jesus would never say anything like that. Vomiting people out is exclusive. Well, that's what Jesus said, okay? Jesuit person. Why are you calling me a Jesuit? You are a Jesuit person. You wear a turtleneck in those Christmas, fo Christmas images. That's really offensive. But it is what it is. We must not be lukewarm. By the way, if you're interested in the book of Revelation, the apocalypse, check out, and there's the wrong video again, and a wrong video again. Check out, hold up, I'm going to fix this once and for all. Check out my book, here it is, Antichrist and Apocalypse. It's a line by line commentary on the book of Revelation. It's the number one best-selling commentary on the book of Revelation on Amazon. And it's a Catholic commentary, not a Protestant left behind commentary. I also send you a signed copy at certain levels if you go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Everyone who supports this podcast at Patreon and supports my writing and supports all these efforts, I thank you. My family thanks you. You make this life possible for us. And if you would like to join our team and support what we are trying to accomplish, I'd encourage you to go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall and become a financial supporter, a patron, a Patreon at patreon.com. Appreciate all of you very much. And if you're a new Patreon, I send you cool things like signed copies of books and stuff. Check it out. Judy, I love your liberal voice. But Taylor, yeah. I started doing this a few years ago and every time I get into a rhetorical conversation with the other side, it's always, but Taylor, we have to be really nice to people. But Taylor, if we talk about the Bible, people are going to get like offended and stuff. And I just, I just don't care. Liberal Jesuit voice person. What is your El Guapo? Mike says, communion in the hand made me go to the Latin mass. For me, it was communion in the hand and Eucharistic ministers dressed in the Grover t-shirt that tipped me over. Tip the scales to the Latin mass. Don't look back. Go. 
Sir Law says, on kneeling for communion, the church thinks we don't have to kneel. Who's the church? Did the church say that? Or did people at the USCCB say that? It's a good question. Well, Taylor, it's a good question. Look into it. Do your own research. When I read the Old Testament and the New Testament, there sure is a lot of bowing down and falling to the knees before God. Sure does happen a lot in the Bible. Seems like a normative thing to do if you are in the real presence of Jesus Christ. I mean, we genuflate before the tabernacle every time we cross it or see it. Why would you not get on your knees when you're actually in the presence inches away from God? Hector asks about Patreon. Do you give a hardcover signed copy? I'm not sure on... I know infiltration is hard cover and signed. I'm not sure on Patreon if Antichrist and Apocalypse is. I think it might be soft cover that's sent out. I wish I knew more. Lots of people excited. Yep, kneeling. Yeah. Kneel. Bend the knee. That's what we say, Psalm 94. Bend the knee before the Lord thy God. Remember in, I wish I, I, wish I had uh, this queued up, but remember in Indiana Jones' Last Crusade, he has to go through the three trials to get to the Holy Grail at the end. The bad Nazis shoot his dad, Sean Connery, in the belly. Young Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, he's got to go in and get the Holy Grail, and he has to pass three tests. I believe it's the first test. The penitent man. The penitent man will pass. The penitent. The penitent man will pass. The penitent man. The penitent man will pass. The penitent. The penitent. The penitent man kneels, and he kneels, and the razor blades go, and he kneels, and he does not get his head cut off. Why is it that Indiana Jones, not a real devout guy. If you watch Indiana Jones trilogy, I guess there's the new, new ones now, China. No, is it is Crystal Skull? I was going to say China Skull. The Crystal Skull and the something else. Indiana Jones knows that the penitent man kneels before the Lord. Daniel, I wish you could pull that clip up for us right now. It'd be so slick. The penitent man kneels before the Lord. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. It's in the church. But a bunch of liberal bishops in the 1960s who loved to get their PhDs from Protestant universities and invited Protestants to Vatican II and consulted Protestants on what Catholic worship should look like all those people said, don't kneel at the Eucharist. Psh. H to the no. H to the nizzo. Corey Trevor says, Francis is doing to the church what Obama did to the U.S. No comment. If you really want to know what I think, read Infiltration. I say perhaps more than that. The new movie is called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah, that's right. That's the one with all the CGI in it. I don't know. Last Crusade's the best. Facts are facts. Mike, is, is it wrong to kneel on one knee? I try to kneel, but I have a bad knee, so I kneel on one. That's totally fine. I, every Sunday at the Church Latin Mass, I see people who come to the altar rail and do not kneel because they have back problems and knee problems. You are an exception, right? You're not asked to kneel if you cannot kneel or it causes severe pain or makes, aggravates the injury. So people who cannot kneel come up to the rail and stand there and they receive communion standing and that's totally fine, right? I have a good back and great knees. Left one hurts a little bit sometimes, but I'm generally in good shape. So if I'm gonna go before Jesus Christ, I'm gonna kneel down and receive on the tongue because the Eucharist is not a finger food.
Before we close, I want to invite everybody while we're doing f- winter enrollment to join me at the New St. Thomas Institute. The New St. Thomas Institute is where I teach online courses. And if you really want to get into the liturgy, particularly the traditional Latin mass, all right, you want to know what's going on here. Why is there a priest in the middle and a deacon and a subdeacon? And what is everybody around doing? And who are the guys in the copes? And how did all of this come about? How do I attend the traditional Latin mass? How do I I teach you how to say all the responses in Latin phonetically slowly? Dominus vobiscum. Ecce agnus dei. All these phrases, confitio dei, dei, all these, confitio dei, messed up. All these responses in the traditional Latin mass. Domini non sudignus. All these things, I teach you those. I give you the history, the calendar, all that. It's all at New St. Thomas Institute. So if you want to take an in-depth course on the traditional Latin Mass, it's waiting for you. Very, very inexpensive. And during the winter enrollment right now, you're getting all 10 courses. So you're getting Latin Mass, you're getting philosophy, theology, Old Testament, New Testament, apologetics, how to share your faith with Jewish friends, Muslim friends, Protestant friends, liberal Catholics. It's all there. Go to nsti.com and sign up as a student today. You won't regret it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's everything that I've ever wanted about to find in Catholicism, Dewey Rings Bible, Greek, Latin, Catholic Encyclopedia, everything I've ever wanted placed in one place. It's an online institute, nsti.com. Check it out and join under our winter enrollment. All right, friends, remember, our Lord made you unique. He made one of you. He has a plan for you. Your purpose in this life is to bring honor and glory to him and bring other people to him. And if you're still alive right now, he still has a plan for you. There's still a purpose for you. Whether you are watching this and you are 99 years old or whether you're watching this and you're 12 years old, male, female, he has a plan and a purpose for you. Do not lose hope. Pray every day. Now is Lent. You should be fasting. You should be hungry. You should be reading more Bible. You should be reading great Catholic books. I can help you all with that at nsti.com, by the way. This is a time of discipleship. It's training. Use today's day eight in Lent, but use this time of Lent to grow closer to Jesus, to be a disciple. And remember that our Lord Jesus Christ says, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. I'm Dr. Taylor Marshall. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Till then, Godspeed.